Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this is Stew's News, a review of American high-speed rail happenings over the last month. In this July 2024 episode, we'll take a look at what went down in June. Starting off with Dallas-Fort Worth high-speed transportation and the biggest news of the month, the Dallas City Council voted unanimously to oppose construction of DFW HST through Dallas above ground. The Dallas City Council requested an economic impact study back in March and declared that they would reconsider the above ground issue when said impact study is completed. This is of course in response to the North Central Texas Council of Government's plans that favor routing DFW HST through downtown Dallas seven stories up on a lengthy viaduct. If you've been watching your stews news like you should, the hesitance of the Dallas City Council comes as no surprise. However, this is not necessarily a nail in the project's coffin, but it will certainly delay the process from here on out. It also possibly brings the project into conflict with Texas Central Railway because its NEPA-approved Dallas station is the reason DFW HST would need to be elevated in this manner. Many other alignments were investigated by NCT COG before settling on the current one that Dallas isn't a fan of, so there's likely a way through this that will work, but you can kiss this hypothetical timeline I came up with goodbye. No other developments in Texas, but that one was a doozy. Let's move on to California High Speed Rail. LA Metro issued a draft environmental impact statement for the Link Union Station project, which will install through tracks, bring the station up to a modern standard, and ultimately get it ready to receive California high-speed rail at some point in the future. We last talked about this in February regarding value engineering possibly consolidating 10 through running tracks down to two to the south. However, the draft EIS makes it clear those 10 tracks will consolidate to a minimum of four tracks two built in the first phase for conventional rail and two more later during phase two of the station expansion. Those second two would then be electrified for California high-speed rail through two sets of platforms when it's ready to show up. In construction news, precast concrete beams were laid across State Route 198 for the Hanford Viaduct, marking an important milestone for that structure. Still a long way to go before it's done though. I talked about this some in my second California High Speed Rail Road Trip video. Check it out if you haven't seen it, link in the card and description. Senator Ted Cruz and Representative Sam Graves requested the presence of Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg at a briefing for their respective committees in regards to federal funding continuing to flow to California High Speed Rail. Looks like a muck-raking expedition, but not surprising since congressional Republicans would like to have California high-speed rail barred from federal funding entirely. That, by the way, is a reference to H.R. 4820, the Transportation, Housing and Urban Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act of 2024, which has been in limbo for seven months because Congress is running like a well-oiled machine as usual. Now let's look at this month's progress reports. Keep in mind these run two months behind and this data is for April. Capital outlay budget summary. Expenditures up to 124.9 million. Better, but still underwhelming. However, May preliminary numbers looking strong. We'll have to see how much of that is change orders, but if they can keep that pace up the last two months of the fiscal year, they may be able to meet the expenditure budget for the year. Design build expenditures still nothing to write home about at $70 million. Risk contingency drawdown was relatively slight at $35 million. Construction labor force at 1,538 average daily workers, which I believe is an all-time high. If the preliminary May numbers hold, we might finally be seeing results from the extra workers. Construction progress, nothing to show this month. CP1 earned value chart. Schedule performance index slipping again to 0.95. 
That's a negative trend, but let's wait until next month to see if maybe those better numbers turn things around. Last month, we talked about CP1 Railroad right-of-way property acquisition coming under pressure. Still no movement in April, and as you can see here, they pushed things back two months. That looks like a slip. Overall, a mixed bag this month, but did things finally take a turn for the positive in May? Tune in to Stu's News next month to find out. Okay, thank you very much, California High Speed Rail. That will be all for the moment. Now let's see what's happening with Acela and the NEC. A preponderance of perplexing power problems plaguing passenger provider Amtrak. This time causing some difficulties getting into New York Penn Station on June 20th, which had a ripple effect and briefly shut down the NEC from New Haven to Philadelphia. That was seemingly resolved quickly, but there were residual effects still hampering trains the next day. NJ Transit was not pleased. Might be time for a second catered lunch. We talked about this being a shoe in last August, but FTA funding to the tune of nearly $6.9 billion was finalized for the Hudson River Tunnel Project, which will build two new rail tunnels under the Hudson between New Jersey and New York City, as well as rehab the existing 113-year-old North River Tunnels. Our beloved Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer Happy cows. promptly appeared from nowhere to take credit. Demolition of derelict piers from a previous Susquehanna River Bridge is set to begin right about the time of the making of this video, June 2024. This is preliminary work which will make way for construction of a pair of new high-speed railroad bridges over the Susquehanna. There is some controversy brewing as Scott Spencer of Ameristar Rail, an organization proposing an alternate build of the project, attempts to connect the existing piers historically to the Underground Railroad, which helped guide escaped slaves north to freedom before and during the Civil War. You can read the article and decide for yourself if there is a legitimate claim here or if it's obstruction. Now let's take a look at the Amtrak monthly report results. Like the California High Speed Rail reports, these also run two months behind. Acela, the big NEC winner for April fiscal year 2024, up a bit in revenue but up substantially in operating earnings both month over month and year over year. NEC Regional struggled a bit after a very strong March, revenue up 12% year over year but earnings dipping 26% and 19% respectively. The two balanced out with NEC Amtrak total revenue and earnings about flat except for year-over-year -year revenue, which was up 9% over the same period in fiscal year 2023. Calendar year 2023 was pretty strong, so it's not a bad sign that fiscal year 2024 isn't up massively. Also, ridership is up 24% year-over-year and on pace to be the biggest ridership year ever for Amtrak on the NEC. Passenger miles also up 17%, so most of that ridership gain is solid. And with that, we'll say so long, fare thee well to the NEC, and hello to Brightline West. The California Public Utilities Commission adopted a resolution to authorize construction of 47 grade-separated rail crossings by Brightline West. These represent most of the necessary grade separations between the Rancho Cucamonga Station and the Victor Valley Station. There are a total of 110 grade separations for the project in California that need to be approved. In addition to the 47 approved by this action, 32 others have been previously approved, leaving 31 to go. While we're on the subject, Brightline West put out some new notices for field work. Looks like mostly geotechnical boring in California, some surveying in Nevada, which sounds like a step closer to 100% design and construction there. Lastly, we're hearing once again from the esteemed Senator from New York, Chuck Schumer. Happy cows. Senator Schumer this time lobbying to have those Brightline West Siemens American Pioneer 220s built in New York State since Brightline West took a pass on the Alstom Avelia Liberty, which is built mostly in New York. 
There are several possibilities on the table for the location of the plant that will make those train sets. Could be California, Nevada, or North Carolina, but you know what they say. Whatever Chuck Schumer wants, Chuck Schumer gets, and little man, Chuck Schumer wants Brightline West train sets manufactured in New York State. And now it's time for Stu's Boo Boos, where we go over everything I missed or got wrong last month. Well, I made a great boo boo this time, I forgot my own rules and corrected a boo boo before the end of the month. Last month, I indicated that the preferred alternative for California high speed rail Palmdale Burbank was the refined SR14 alternative. It's actually the SR14A alternative. Very similar alignments, but SR14A is underground slightly longer in the Acton area. Cost is similar or $3 billion more in 2018 dollars, depending on which figures from the report you believe. That was rather foolish of me. Probably no one would have spotted that and you all would have lost a gold star, but now you gain one. That gives you 12 gold stars. Silver stars for a boo-boo free month, sadly only three. As always, if you find a boo-boo in this presentation or something I missed, let me know in the comments. If it's a good one, you win a prize. Thanks as always to the Lucid Group Discord channel for their assistance and wisdom. Thanks especially to Ben from the Empire State Passengers Association for happy cows. What can I say, the guy is a titan. Check out the ESPA Facebook page and show him some love. Good stuff over there if you like trains. If you would like to help out with Stu's News each month, come join our Motley crew. Invite link is in the description. Plenty more of your favorite channel series on the way. Up next, we're going back to the NEC, but this time to see how you would improve it. If you haven't already, check out my recently completed road trip between Anaheim and San Francisco to check out the California High Speed Rail Phase 1 route in person. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway!